Yes, uh, my name's Michael Wright. Uh, I live in Berwick here. Uh, I'm on the board of directors of the Great Works Regional Land Trust. And in 2017, Mike Kaplan came to the uh, Great Works and asked if he would be interested in a donation of some property he and his brother had here in Berwick. We worked with Mike and Steve to find out what their vision for the property was and soon found out that we had very similar goals for the future of the property. So this is uh, 76, 76 acres um, of forested uh, habitat. Uh, this property has uh, 1,680 feet on the Salmon Falls River. Uh, and, and it abuts town property, uh, the, sewer, the sewer district. And um, uh, CMP has a substation here that abuts as well. This is one of, uh, one of the properties that we have in Berwick that are on the Salmon Falls River. We have three other properties upriver. Uh, we refer to it as the Salmon Falls River Conservation Area. It consists of uh, Takahoe yeah, One, which yeah. was a donation from Takahoe Turf Farm. Actually, it was a uh, result of a mitigation process they had with the EPA for wetland violations. So it's 103 acres. We also purchased with a bargain sale two other parcels that are nearby actually abutting uh, Takahoe 2 which has uh, it's a 32 acre, 34 acre property uh, with uh, a lot of frontage on Key Brook and our Key Brook property is just down the street a little ways at abuts in the back. It's uh, the Key Brook property is uh, 86 acres. It was an improved 13 lot subdivision that we were able to buy at a bargain sale uh, from the developers. Um, and we purchased that with help from Maine Natural Resource Conservation Program funds. Both of those properties were with uh, uh, funding through MNRCP. My name is uh, Tim Smith. I'm also a board member of the Great Works Regional Land Trust, and I'm on the stewardship committee here. And we are one of this is one of the 30 properties that we own, about 3,000 acres. And on some of our properties, we do active management, and this is one of the properties we are practicing active management on. And by active management, I mean we're, this forest was harvested about 35 years ago, has not been touched since. We are coming in here and our goal here is to move this forest to a more older growth and more um, protected for wildlife habitat. And by doing that, we're thinning out, there's a lot of stems in here, we're thinning those stems out, we're harvesting the smaller wood, and we're actually selecting the bigger and the nicer trees to remain. Uh, well, I had served on the board for a long time, and um, one of the things Tim Smith and I had talked about was uh, forest management on our property and trying to do it in a way that was a little bit different than having large logging companies come in and do things. And uh, we were trying to figure out how this could get done, and uh, it was eventually I, I sort of uh, volunteered myself as a... Uh, um, sort of if you want something done right you'd have to do it yourself kind of thing so that's uh, how I got started doing it with the land trust and that was about uh, nine years ago some of the reasons the reasons we cut some of the cut woods is to create trails and recreational opportunities but it's also out to thin out the trees that are in too dense of a stand and select the better trees and the, um, to continue to grow and to become what we call an older growth forest you know, right in here, 
might be a tree, you know, still only about 35 years old, nice and straight. This is, might be one we select for, and we'll start removing everything around it to lessen the competition for this oak. And that's the type of management we'll do, sort of a reverse what maybe a forester might do, because he's marking for income, where we're marking to create an old growth forest. You know, they, a lot of them, you know, we've, we've done some cutting and they complain about exactly this. But we say, well, this is it. This is, you know, this is what it's like. And, you know, you just got to get used to it. It's a working forest. Yeah. And so... It also leaves nutrients in the, in yeah, the, the tops. The tops have like 85% of all the nutrients in the tree. And by leaving the tops here, you're returning those nutrients to the forest. The actual trunk doesn't have that many nutrients in it. So you're removing it. It's mostly carbon. But here, you're leaving it back, although it, you know, can be unsightly, you know, some, some organizations chip this, but that's a lot of, that's energy intensive to chip it, so we're not doing that yet. And again, in three years, you'll just, you'll see a little bit of the trunks, but everything else will be gone. Also, brush piles will provide habitat yeah. for Yeah, and sometimes we'll pile it for brush piles. Uh, it, it's mostly hardwood. What I'm looking to do, generally what we're uh, practicing is, is sort of a crop tree release and um, primarily of, of thinning out the lower value hardwoods and taking them out um, and processing them to firewood to sell for the land trust. It's uh, has a lower both visual impact and you know with the small equipment you can be more selective about what you're doing and there's a lot of considerations we goes to in, in terms of managing being careful around vernal pools um, uh, the wildlife considerations leaving snag trees um, leaving the slash on the ground which is habitat for animals and birds. Right. Yes, the, the, the firewood the firewood of course is sold. Uh, to members and to the public, and the, and the monies go right back into supporting the stewardship on the properties. So that's one of the revenue streams that we get. Uh, but mostly, we're looking at the habitat improvement on the properties is usually the, big, the is the biggest benefit we get from the, these harvests. Okay, so uh, we're actively uh, working on trails here. We're hoping that this will be open soon to the public. Um, the public is welcome to come down here and take a look, but we don't really have uh, trails finished at this point. We 
have a, a stewardship volunteer crew who comes out and works on trail, trail development, and um, that's really open to anybody who wants to volunteer. They should contact our stewardship director and, um, and uh, let, let us know if you want to come out and help us uh, build the trails. So a lot of this work, in fact, all of this work is done by volunteers, and Great Works Regional Land Trust is a, is a volunteer-run organization. We do have a couple staff people that support those volunteers. So we're always looking for help, both in conserving properties and in stewardship. You can contact us through our website, which is www.gwrlt.org.